Hi there. Do you think President William Ruto is going to borrow more than what former President Uhuru Kenyatta did borrow? Or do you think President Ruto is going to use alternative means to revive the economy? Share your thoughts down below. Before I delve deep into this video, I'd really like to know your thoughts. What do you think President Ruto is going to do? Is he going to borrow more than what Uhuru did borrow? Or is he going to use alternative means to revive the economy? Having said that, you are all much welcomed to the Money Daily YouTube channel. My name is Afadza Sifuna. We all need to understand one thing. As a country, we are quite in a mess. And I'm saying so because we're talking about the national debt being in the range of 9 trillion Kenya shilling. That is 9,000 billion. And to break that down further for you to understand, take that 900, 9,000 billion Kenya shilling, divide by the country's population, assuming a population of 50 million people. We're talking about each and everyone in this country, including a one month old, a two week old, having a debt of 180,000 on their head. In case, it's a mechanic right now, to wherever we are as a country, each and every one of us needs to fork out 180,000 Kenya shilling. That is the extent we are in debt as a country. And talking about debt, people thought like, for example, in case Dr. William Samaruto become president of Kenya, the borrowing will stop. Unfortunately, it can't stop. And I'm saying so because just 50 days into office, the government of Dr. William Samaruto has already reached an agreement with the IMF, which is only awaiting the IMF's executive board approval for money to be released. We're talking about amount of 443 million US dollars. That comes to about 40 something billion Kenya shilling, which by the way is kind of crazy, but looks like this cyclic way of borrowing as a country is not going to stop anytime soon. And I'm saying so because we're talking about situation by the economy is quite a mess and needs to be fixed. And sadly, we can't also tap into the same economy, which actually is bleeding a lot for us to fix the country. I foresee three key challenges in the short term. Of course, these are also the realities of our country because there is no way we can get out of it without borrowing. The first thing is that this, we're going to see increased public debt. That is not a question of whether we're going to see it or not. We are bound to see it as a country because as mentioned, we are amazed and most likely President Ruto is going to still continue borrowing for the short term to mid term, try and see how to stabilize things in the country in the hope that he can catalyze intense local production so that the country can be able to be self-sustaining, right? And then the second thing we're bound to see, which is going to be inevitable from also increased borrowing, is that the country is actually going to end up paying more for the principal and interest of the additional loans which we are borrowing. And just to make you all understand, last year alone, we we're talking about the amount to repay the loans as a country being upwards of a trillion Kenyan shilling for the first time. In fact, the projections to the end of the last financial period were talking about 1.3 trillion Kenyan shilling is the amount which was going to repay loans we were owning as a country. We were owing as a country. And by the way, that's quite disturbing because the debt repayment for the first time surpassed the entire national government expenses. That is how intense the situation is. Imagine the debt repayment surpassing government's entire expenses. That already tells you we are quite a mess as a country. And sadly, it's not going to stop anytime soon because we still have to repay the principal and the interest we owe from the previous loans. And in case we continue borrowing, we also need to pay to repay the principal and interest which we're going to own because of the continuous borrowing, which are inevitable. And then the third short term to mid term inevitable consequences that also as a country we're most likely going to lose our bargaining power think about it we owe china for example already a lot of money in case continue borrowing from china guys it only means that our continuous borrowing is going to attract worse and worse conditions for our country and even that's why for example when the new cs for transport murkoman was entering office he was very eager to make public the sgr contract because he was of the opinion that these must really 
have had an upper hand for China compared to Kenya. And regardless of the situation is, in case because we continue to borrowing out there, chances are we're going to be disfranchised this, this ourselves as a country because the other country we'll be borrowing from is going to have an upper hand. Talking about that, what options do we have as a country? I'm going to talk about that from two spheres. The options the government has and also the options each of us as individuals have to ensure we are okay individually and also contribute to the national kitty so that ultimately we continue staying afloat as a country. At the national level, of course, the government has no option but continue borrowing and also to continue repaying the debts. But the only thing we can pray for as a country is that in case they continue borrowing, these funds which the government is going to continue borrowing need to go to utilize to, to the earmark utilization. We need to cut out things like corruption so that as a country, we ensure any additional borrowing we do is actually going towards the purpose for which it was borrowed for, right? And of course, secondly, also as a country, you're going to see, for example, President Ruto working very hard. Try and see how to increase levels of self-sustaining as a country. Talk about him investing heavily in production, right? Talk about him, for example, fostering efforts around diversification as a country. These are inevitable for us to be able to be in a position to at least cut off external borrowing so that we start being self-sustaining as a country, right? And then, what can you and I do as individuals? You know, it's only so much you can do as individuals. Of course, for the largest chunk of it, we rely on government because government is the one which dictates the direction with regards to how to repay the national debts, how to control in the economy of the country, and so forth. But to an individual capacity, I think what you can do first things first, invest in yourself. We're talking about Kenya being heavily a country which is in the service sector, partly agriculture, and also a small extent in manufacturing, driving the GDP of the country. But sadly, we haven't really exerted our force fully in the service industry. Look at other economies out there, for example, the US economy, being driven by financial services, technology, and other sectors out there, which are actually bringing in revenue a lot, a lot to the government, more so in a short cycle compared to what we as a country are relying on, for example, agriculture which takes longer to generate revenue. So, invest in yourself as an individual for you to acquire the much needed necessary skills which are actually up to power with the current world in terms of data, in terms of technology, so that you can also contribute to national cake by triggering short-term revenue generation cycles as opposed to the current long-term cycles. Second thing you need to do also is actually you need to save for the rainy days. We all know Nikubaya. Save for the rainy days because you don't know what the future holds, okay? And then, the third thing you need to do is that diversify your source of income. What am I talking about? In case you are employed, don't just rely on your salary. Diversify your source of income. Use a salary to get additional side hustles out there to delve into business for you to be able to have even three, four, five streams of income. By doing that, in case one of the streams of income is cut off, you won't really rely much on government. Because by relying much on government, you're only going to be exerting more and more pressure to government. But in case you have different sources of income out there, it's going to go a long way in assisting cushioning you and also cushioning your dependents in the event that one of the streams of income dries off. In the event, for example, you are chased away from your job, you lose your job and so forth, you're going to have a buffer on which you can rely upon as you think about bouncing back. Okay, and then the fourth thing you need to do is invest, invest, invest. Think about it. Investment is the only way which you can get someone's money and actually ultimately in the long term for it to be your money. So invest so that after some time you can be able, for example, to make money from stock market, to make money from, for example, talk about cryptocurrency, to make money from, for example, businesses, real estate, and so forth. And by talking about real estate, the fifth thing that you need to do, try your level best to jump into value holding investments out there, for example, real estate. Kind of investments, for example, in case even the currency of the country is devalued, still the asset which you have is going to still have high value. What do you think about this video? I hope you have learned a thing or two.